Coming up on The Watchman, Amir Sarfati is here with a prophetic breakdown of the showdown between Israel and Iran and why it matters to you. That's next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to The Watchman Newscast, coming to you from our Stackelbeck Tonight set here at TBN's global headquarters in Dallas, Fort Worth, where I just interviewed our good friend, the one and only Amir Sarfati, founder and president of Behold Israel. Now, we'll get to my interview with Amir in a second. And folks, he gave the prophetic breakdown. What does this all mean? Larger picture, biblically, the showdown between Israel and Iran. We'll get to Amir in just a minute, but a quick update in terms of the state of play and what's happening right now. Number one, European leaders and the Biden administration continue to pressure Israel to not respond to Iran's unprecedented attack last weekend. But today, and, and to the point where European leaders are flying to Israel on the ground to try and get face time with the prime minister and beg him, implore him to let Iran off the hook, which would mean, as we've been discussing over the past few days here in the newscast, that Iran would just do it again and again. That would be the message that Iran would take deterrence would be out the window for good. I don't think Israel is going to let that happen. That's why Prime Minister Netanyahu said today, look, we ultimately, hey, we're listening. There's a lot of different opinions, but we ultimately are in control of our own security, of our own destiny. I would argue that God Almighty, the God of Israel, is ultimately in control of that destiny, but encouraging to see Prime Minister Netanyahu not caving to this relentless world pressure. That's number one. Number two, another big takeaway today, earlier today, Hezbollah. We've been talking about the intensification of the showdown between Israel and Iran's most lethal proxy, Hezbollah. Well, earlier today, a Hezbollah attack drone, explosive laden, slammed into a building in northern Israel in the upper Galilee region, wounding 18 people, mostly Israeli soldiers, and critically wounding one person. Folks, it's unsustainable, I believe, the current status quo, if you can call it that, in northern Israel, where we have some 100,000 Israelis evacuated from their homes, living out of suitcases, living in hotels, with no clear indication of when they can return to their homes in northern Israel, as Hezbollah remains largely perched on that Israel-Lebanon border. It's simply unsustainable. Northern Israel right now, in parts, is essentially a ghost town as Hezbollah continues these daily barrages of the world's one and only Jewish state. So eventually, sooner rather than later, I believe Israel must act. We're gonna discuss that with Amir in a second. First, quick reminder, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the Watchman YouTube channel right here and click that notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. And you see this beautiful set here, folks. This is the Stacklebeck Tonight set. Now it's our brand new nightly show every weeknight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time with a re-air at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time on TBN, the world's largest Christian television network. Stacklebeck Tonight is coming to you with the inside story, not only of the Middle East, but everything going on in the world right now from a biblical perspective and how it impacts you no matter where you live. So tune in. The interview you're about to see with Amir will be on tonight's episode of Stacklebeck Tonight. We've also got a great guest, Dr. Michael Youssef of Leading the Way and much more. So be sure to check out Stacklebeck Tonight. In the meantime, founder and president of Behold Israel, Amir Sarfati, subscribe to his YouTube channel as well and be sure to follow him on Telegram. Here it is, a breakdown, a prophetic breakdown with Amir Sarfati. Take a look. Prime Minister Netanyahu said today that Israel will make its own decisions. Imagine that. Are you hearing anything about a potential Israeli response? Absolutely. Uh, the, the decision to attack has been already made. We're waiting for the right moment. Eric, this is not just about attacking Iran. It's about making sure that you're not only ready to send your F-35s, your ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and, also, and so on, but you're also ready at the same time for a massive strike from Hezbollah and from the um, uh, Iranian proxies in Iraq and Syria. And so we need to make sure we're ready for not only the, the offense, but also the defense. And we've made the right preparations. We're ready to attack. I don't think any European or the United States 
any European country or America would allow 110 ballistic missiles, 36 drones, and 186 um, excuse me, 36 cruise missiles, 186 uh, drones to fly at, into your airspace without any answer to it. In the Middle East, if you don't answer to such an attack, which is the largest combined attack in the history of warfare on one country, if you don't answer to this in the Middle East, you're perceived weak and you're inviting even more problems. Yeah, and Amir, we're seeing the footage there of Iranian ballistic missiles above the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, historic in all the wrong ways. Israel has made the decision, as you say, but is this going to be the kind of response from Israel that you believe will send a very clear deterrent message to the Iranian regime so they will never, never try this, God willing, again? Well, it better be, because if we, if it's not going to be strong and decisive enough, then we are actually inviting more problems. I think that what Israel needs to do is to strike forcefully, decisively, and unapologetically in a way that the Iranians will understand that even if tomorrow we are killing another Iranian general in Syria, they better not strike from Iranian soil. And let me tell you, Eric, I don't think we're going to destroy their nuclear program this time, but we're going to make sure that they understand that if they retaliate to what we're going to do, their nuclear program program is next. Yeah, and I can only imagine, Amir, I shudder to think if those ballistic missiles that were launched Saturday night were nuclear tipped. Hey, that's the goal today. We had this Hezbollah attack. I mentioned in the lead in, Amir, 18 people, including several Israeli soldiers wounded. It feels like that war between Israel and Hezbollah to the north is imminent. How do you see it? Absolutely. Look, uh, at this, as long as we were uh, in that war that uh, we're handling both the northern border and the southern border, we wanted to finish first with Gaza and then move to Hezbollah. But since we have a new player, a new and old, a new one that came down from the balcony and finally is taking an active role on the field, it sort of pushes us to give more attention now to the Northern Front and finish the job there, maybe even simultaneously. I've always said that you don't need F-35s for Gaza and you don't need tanks for Iran. We can handle our, our war both in Gaza and, and in Lebanon with our tanks and F-16s and our artillery and infantry. And at the same time, we can use ballistic missiles, we can use cruise missiles, drones, and F-35s when we take care of Iran. Yeah, Amir, about 45 seconds to the, to the break, and we're bringing you right back right after. But do you sense that world outrage against Israel will grow as it responds as it should to Iran? Is this world pressure going to intensify? Always, listen, the people love us when we're being attacked, when we're the victims. The minute we retaliate, and we strike back, this is when the world says, you can't do it, you're not allowed to do it, and that's when all the evil and all the, uh, you know, all the bad responses are coming out. So it's, it's obvious that it's going to come out, and we are okay with that. Yeah, you know, it's a given, sadly, and I was heartened to see Prime Minister Netanyahu say, say today, hey, look, we're going to make our own decisions for our security. Hey, by the way, you've got a great new book out, Discovering Daniel. Everyone needs to pick it up, pre-order it right now. You make sense of what's happening in the Middle East prophetically. Do you see any prophetic implications in the showdown right now between Israel and Iran? Well, absolutely. Look, Iran, as much as we would love to see the Ayatollahs uh, being toppled and have a much greater regime for the Iranian people, which, by the way, people whom we love uh, so much, uh, the Bible is telling us that the war with Iran is far from being over. In fact, Iran, whether it's going to be defeated by Israel now or call it even, Iran will eventually join a coalition against Israel, a coalition led by Russia. And lo and behold, we see it already that Russia is siding with Iran, Turkey is siding with Iran, and they're preparing their... Uh, proxies in Libya and Sudan as well. And these are exactly the countries that Ezekiel is prophesying as the coalition that is going to come against Israel. Is so the Israelis now looking and seeing that the, uh, the war that we are seeing uh, is becoming broader and broader, and finally they start thinking Ezekiel-ish.
Yeah, absolutely. And we see this pretty unprecedented also, Amir, to see Russia, Turkey, and Iran coming together, and Russia at Israel's doorstep. And it seems that tensions have increased between Russia and Israel over the past few months. Is that true? It is very true. We are extremely disappointed with the Russian uh, stand on so many different uh, areas. I mean, look, the Russians are destroying cities in 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 Ukraine, Chernihiv and Kharkiv and all of those every day they are hitting civilian targets with unashamedly they are coming against Israel that is going against terrorists that are um, protecting themselves with human shields and they are blaming us for the things that actually they're doing. Russia is hypocrite. Russia is taking care of its own um, interest. We can see that they do not want Iran to be done because they need the Iranians for weapon and for buying oil from them. So, you know, we see that uh, the Middle East, it's all about interests. It's all about intrigues and it's all about um, my, my my enemy's enemy is my friend. And um, Israel must be very, very, very ready for um, this alliance. But, you know, we'll never be ready enough for an alliance of giants like Russia, Iran, and Turkey together. And there we see the amazing supernatural help of yeah. the God of a great point, Amir. Look, uh, the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, talks about God's divine hand. And it doesn't end too well for that Ezekiel invasion force, does it? No, not at all. But it, thanks not to our tanks or artillery, thanks to the supernatural power of the God of Israel. And by the way, even in the, in the face of the great defense that we have experienced, the great uh, successful defense that we have experienced, quite a few Israelis noticed that it, the probability of 99% interception is something unlikely and is some divine intervention here. So if we're seeing divine intervention or intervention already, you can imagine how the Israelis are going to be amazed when God is going to shake the earth and throw stuff from uh, from the skies on the enemies of Israel and defeat them on the mountains of Israel. Yeah, Amir, we have about 45 seconds left, and we will have you back soon at length. An entire episode of Stackelbeck tonight coming with Amir Sarfati. But real quick, you mentioned God moving Saturday night. You and I have talked previously God is moving among the people of Israel. There's real reason for us to be encouraged about God pouring out his spirit on his people and his land. Correct. I believe that uh, there is, as I said to you then, there's a great exodus of Jewish people from secularism, hedonism, and materialism because they understand there's a greater force that we, even if we didn't acknowledge so far, we need to acknowledge now because we're at the point where only he can help us which is good because that's what all God has always been there for us. And he always wanted us to be at the point where we only call a call for, for his help and not rely on our own strength. Some trust in horses, some in chariots, but we shall call upon the name of the Lord as Psalm 20 says. Thanks again to our good friend, Amir Sharfati, founder and president of Behold Israel. A few quick reminders, folks. Number one, be sure to follow Amir on Telegram. He's got great updates there every day. I think it's around the clock. I was joking with him during the interview. I don't know when he sleeps. I'm sure he fits in a nap here and there, but he is a very busy man in all the right ways. Follow him on Telegram. Also subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's also got a great new book out, Discovering Daniel, available now for pre-order. So check it out. And be sure to check out, of course, the Stackelbeck Tonight Show on TBN. Again, every Monday through Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time with a re-air at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time for such a time as this. We'd love to have you join us until tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining us here on The Watchmen. God bless you. And remember, never. Hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.